Hey, all you cool, sober cats and kittens. <laughs> what are the odds? I've been thinking about forgiveness a lot lately. The old maxim says that forgiveness is a funny thing because it warms the heart and cools the sting. I literally just realized that that rhymes. Here I go again on my own. But is there really any truth to that? Is there really something warm and comforting about the act of forgiveness? Is that sting ever really something that can be cooled after somebody's wronged you? Is forgiveness a funny thing? It's generally agreed upon that forgiveness is good for us. That it's healing. Healing. I agree with that. It makes perfect sense. Doesn't make forgiveness any easier, but I am on board with the sentiment. But the more I ponder forgiveness, the more I relate it to sobriety. Why, you ask? Because I relate f***ing everything to sobriety. Also, you're literally watching a channel that's dedicated to sobriety. So what did you expect? In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my history with the act of forgiveness. Do a deep dive into the benefits of forgiving, especially as it relates to sobriety, and give you guys a nifty little exercise to help you get on the road to forgiving others or forgiving yourself or whoever else you might need to forgive. One that you can begin doing today, right now, right after this video, if you feel like it. I mean, do you really have anything better to do? So make sure you stay tuned till the very end or else. I'm the Tamagotchi you killed in fourth grade by forgetting to feed it, Allie. I'm also the creator and host of this little channel, Young, Dumb, and Sober, the channel where I try to convince you that getting high and drunk is lame as f and getting sober is badass. If you wanna help me spread that message and the idea that sobriety is fun, fun. subscribe to this channel. Also hit the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload new content, which is every Wednesday and more. And if you want to really support the channel, head over to youngdumbandsober.com to purchase some YDS merch. Kind of like this hat. See, it says real fun, like the tagline, real fun. <sighs> it's better if I don't explain it. You kind of just get it on your own. Rock that shit. Tag me on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or Twitter or whatever social media platform you use. I literally have all of them and I will feature you and praise you and sing your accolades. Was that an unnecessarily long introduction? If so, I hope you can forgive me. See what I did there? All right, let's start the show. Hello, my little nugget. Come to me, you cute baby. No, 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 stay with me, please, please. Come on. Why does everyone run away from me? So I've mentioned this on the channel before, so I feel comfortable saying it again. And by comfortable, I mean, I sat there for a couple of minutes thinking, do I really wanna go there on the internet? And finally answered, not really, but it might be useful for someone else, so f it. I also make an active attempt to go towards the things that scare me and go towards my discomfort and my fear about things now that I'm sober because I feel like it's good for my growth as a human being and because I'm fucking crazy. So, I was raised for a large chunk of my childhood by a single mother, an amazing single mother, I might add. Other family members definitely helped out. And by the time I was six, my wonderful stepfather came into the picture and we've been a happy little family ever since. But until the age of six, I didn't have much of a father figure. Big surprise there, right? My biological father was in and out of the picture and eventually he left indefinitely. He, like me and like maybe you and like many of us, probably most people who are watching this video and consume the content on this channel, fell victim to the obsessive compulsive and disastrous nature of addiction. And although I spent years of therapy processing this loss, I always felt on the surface that it hadn't really affected me. I kind of felt numb to the whole situation until I got sober and was asked to make a list of the people who had harmed me and then to make a list of 
what my part was in that harm. If you're familiar with 12-step programs, this is obviously step four shit. And I was actually talking to a friend in the program the other day who was asking my advice about fourth step stuff. And I was reminded of what was told to me when I asked how I was supposed to find my part in something that I had no control over. For instance, being a child and being abandoned by a parental figure, it's kind of difficult to find how the kid had any part in that. For all intents and purposes, the child or I in that situation seem like a complete victim, right? Because how can we be considered responsible in any way, shape, or form when we, 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 weren't, we didn't have the autonomy to do anything about it at the time because we were kids or because it was a traumatic event out of our control or because it was abusive or any one of those things. I, and I tread very lightly with this topic and with this subject and with this type of exercise, like any kind of fourth step type stuff that has you look at things that happen to you and try to see your part in it. It's, it's a touchy topic and I know that it's not for everybody. This is not a one size fits all thing and it's not something that I think everybody should do. And I've heard from several people who have tried out a 12 step program that have realized that the fourth step is just not something that is applicable to them. And for them, they usually seek out other paths of recovery and that's completely fine too. That could be a whole other episode and that's beyond the point. I digress. Anyway, uh, the person who was guiding me through my sobriety at the time when I was asking this question of like, well, how am I supposed to find my part in my father leaving? She helped me realize that one, despite feeling numb to my father abandoning me at a young age, it had still affected me emotionally, probably on a subconscious level. And that's something that I knew prior to working the steps, but something I had learned in therapy, but it wasn't really something I was able to fully connect with until I got sober. And two, that I had to forgive my father. How was I supposed to let go of this? How was I supposed to forgive somebody when I felt like I didn't do anything wrong in the situation where I had no control over it? And I'm shortening this a lot. This was a process that took like months to get through and years to even like scratch the surface on outside of a program point of view. It took a lot of intense work, but the conclusion I eventually came to with help from my therapist and other people was that now that I was an adult, especially a sober adult, my healing of the wound that he created was my responsibility. It was up to me to heal. So I decided that my part in all of it was ignoring my intuition for so long and letting the situation have control and have power over me for longer than it deserved, despite not ever really being fully cognizant of it. A lot of my life and relationships have been tied up in unhealthy patterns of me being unable to choose healthy partners, being terrified of abandonment, and feeling incapable of trusting anyone with my heart. And once I got sober, I realized that I was pretty pissed at my father for causing me to be that way. But taking control of my ability to prioritize and participate in my healing allowed me to forgive him and allowed me to let go. Even to have compassion for him as a fellow person who was affected in a really bad way by the misuse of drugs and alcohol and untreated mental illnesses. That shit got real. And the science says that forgiveness heals and that it's helpful for sobriety, which is part of the reason why it's in one of the steps. And for me, the science turned out to be Right, so let's take a look at it. Robert Enright, the PhD and the founder of the Forgiveness Institute, yes, that's a real place, states that when we hold on to hurt, we are emotionally and cognitively hobbled. Hobbled. And our relationships suffer. So when we let go of hurt or forgive, does that mean that we're cognitively enhanced? and our relationships thrive? Pretty much, yeah, I like to think so. So here are three science back benefits of forgiveness and how forgiveness can help us in sobriety. One, forgiveness is literally good for your heart. One 2017 study from the Annals, Annals, A-N-N-A-L-S, Annals, of behavioral medicine was the first to associate greater forgiveness with less stress and ultimately better mental health. Increases in forgiveness made for less perceived stress which was followed by decreased mental health symptoms. As we know, stress is not great for the heart. As we also know, stress is really not great for people trying to stay sober because we tend to drink and use at stress or to avoid stress. So anything that can lessen the toll of it, including forgiveness, is great for sobriety in my book. Two, forgiving helps you forget. So they say forgive, but don't forget. 
The saying maybe should be forgive and then forget because once you commit to forgiving somebody who has wronged you, there's actually less of a chance that you'll continue to ruminate about the scenario in your mind, allowing for more mental clarity and freedom, something that is absolutely essential to sustain sobriety. Number three, forgiveness helps heal anger. Being in a constant state of anger, even if it's only like bubbling under the surface or you can't really access it or even really know it's there, kind of like in my situation, keeps you in fight or flight mode. And when you're constantly on edge like that, abusing substances can seem like a much better alternative than dealing with the constant feelings of rage and panic and pain. If you're interested in this topic about forgiveness, I suggest that you guys look more into it. There's a ton of research out there. It's super interesting. It's super enlightening. And it really can do wonders for everybody, not just people in sobriety, but it's especially good for us. So let's look at a little exercise that you can do today to get started on your path of forgiveness. So I found this from a book about conscious relationships and thought it was pretty amazing. It actually reminds me a bit of the fourth step in that it begins by having you list everybody who has harmed you in some way. But instead of going down the list and seeking out what your part in it was, you're going to actually write briefly what it was that that person did to you. And then when you're done with that, you're actually going to visualize a conversation with each person one by one. And this can be really, really difficult. And like I said, tread very lightly, especially if you know that you have trauma and that this might be triggering for you. I would suggest that you do it with um, a therapist or somebody else that you trust. So just be careful, be cautious, and break it up if you have to. There's no reason for you to do the whole list in one night. Like you can get started today, but you don't have to finish it today. But what you're going to do is visualize yourself saying to each person one at a time, these words, I forgive you and I release you. Go your own way and be happy. That's hard as fuck, but it's also really freeing. Once you're done, you can actually write across the whole page I now release and forgive all of you. After that, you can do whatever you want once you're finished with the page. You can rip it up, you can burn it, you can keep it forever and refer back to it when you're having a hard time getting back into a place of forgiveness. Whatever feels right for you. As long as you don't set anything on fire because like, I don't wanna feel responsible for that shit. Forgiveness is not an overnight thing. Most of the time when somebody hurt us, it is a long time coming. Um, sometimes there's several things that people have done. Sometimes it's not another person that we need to forgive and it's ourselves for the way that we've treated others or the way that we've treated ourselves, especially people who have dealt with addiction, substance abuse. So be kind to yourself if you're gonna try this exercise and don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't come naturally. Yes, forgiveness is healing and there is a healing power of forgiveness, especially in recovery and sobriety, but only if you practice it and do it in a way that is not adding more harm than good to your life. Because like I said, it can be very overwhelming to do this type of exercise. Okay, everybody, that has been today's episode about forgiveness. If it's helped at least one person today, then my job here is done. I love it if you subscribe to Young, Dumb and Sober so you can be part of the movement and help spread the message that sobriety can be fun. If not, that's okay too. But you're boring and I hate you and I'll never forgive you. It's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun. Okay, bye, see you next time. Walking down the only road I've ever known Like a twister I was born to walk alone I guess that's all she was willing to do.